Okay, so we'll start off with a little bit of backstory on the Monster Racers. Monster Racers were ETC items added to the various Gachapon tables in May of 2008, version 54. These Monster Racers were the subject of much confusion as they popped up around the market as people who would try to gatch for more valuable things would end up with these erasers. Eventually they became pretty valuable in their own right, and this is because they were secretly quest items. I say secret because I don't think that they were data mined for quite a while when they were released, and even then I'm not sure people were really ever informed about them, and the news of the quest rewards mostly traveled by word of mouth. Now the rewards for collecting these items, along with a potential extra quest item, are pretty cool. At least at the time, they were cool. The rewards were blue and pink seal chairs, one-handed swords, the flaming katana, and the glowing whip, and the infamous frozen tuna. I say infamous here because this wasn't the actual beginner-only polearm weapon frozen tuna. This was the all-class frozen tuna that had a little bit lower attack. Eventually, I believe the Ring of Alchemist became a quest reward as well. I assume this was in version 63 when Magatia was released since Han the Broker was involved. So like I said before, these erasers were a little bit confusing. This is because there are two versions of each eraser, except the Fire Raccoon one. There's only one of that, but that one isn't relevant anyway because it's actually useless. But people differentiated between these fake and real erasers by the item description. As the real erasers, meaning the ones that you could actually use for the quests, had a longer description. I'll use the stump as an example. So the item description for the fake or useless eraser was simply an eraser shaped as a stump. The actual useful items description would read an eraser shaped like a stump. There are five other erasers featuring different shapes of forms. Try collecting them all. And so you could. There were erasers for Lupin, Mushbomb, Octopus, Slime, Stump, and Wraith, and Fire Raccoon. But the first six are the important ones. Before I get into the quests, in version 83, an area called Neo City was added to GMS, and to gain access to Neo City, you would have to hunt for an item drop called Andy's Pocket Watch from Leaf Fairy Monsters. Instead, if you visited Andy the Time Traveler and you gave him a single monster eraser, he would give you a Time Traveler's Pocket Watch, which you could use repeatedly, but it only lasted one day. So if you had no interest with that, or if it were before that content came out, you had a choice to make. You could decide to turn in your collected six erasers for frozen tuna or glowing whip, or you could hold out until you had a hectagon necklace for a seal cushion, or until you found Undyne's cloth for the flaming katana. If you happen to have all six erasers and you speak with Hughes the Fuse, he tells you that he's been conducting research and his recent study has hit a dead end. He goes through a ton of pencils for maps, blueprints, and equations, but it just creates so much mess that he's used up all of his erasers. He's in desperate need of an eraser, and if he notices that you're carrying a few around, he'll take them off your hands, because he conducts his studies inside and hardly has time to go out and get one himself. As a reward, it's all he has around currently, but he mentions that he found something around the lab the other day and gives the frozen tuna to you. Judging by his location, which is in one of the lowest levels of Orbis Tower, and his quests, which are him studying the local aquatic wildlife, it's actually pretty reasonable for him to have a frozen tuna on hand. If instead, with your collected monster racers in hand, you visit Alien Grey in the Omega Sector, after already completing his other quests, where he tricks you into stealing classified information about Omega Sector and then gives you a bag to summon aliens in case you're in trouble, but really they just attack you, you go back to go get your revenge on him, but he notices that you have some weird objects with you. He says the eraser that you have resembles a creature that the aliens have been looking for. He wonders if it's been frozen using special equipment and then wants some more. One of each of the six erasers. He thinks that they're super important and can't believe that you're giving them to him, so he gives you a weapon that was made by the aliens. A glowing whip. Moving on. If you happen to have the Hectagon necklace with you while visiting Alinea, Arwen the fairy will stop you and ask about the Hectagon crystal necklace. She's never seen it up close before and she really wants it and says that it doesn't look good on humans anyway and you wouldn't even know what to do with it. The necklace contains incredible power to stop monsters but to awaken it you need monster erasers but it only reacts to fairies not humans so you can't even harness its power. She asks for it promising you an adorable seal cushion as a return trade. Now if instead you happen to be strolling <laughs> through the eastern Rocky Mountains of Pyrion with these erasers in your bag, and for some reason you're just casually carrying around an arcane piece of cloth from a powerful water spirit named Undyne, and you just happen to come across a burnt sword plunged into a pile of ashes while on that stroll, the sword starts talking to you. It says that you look worthy, 
worthy of becoming the new rightful owner of the sword. The spirit that has been trapped in the sword for a long, long time says that it's been waiting for a day when a new owner would free it. Long ago, the spirit used the sword to fight the spirit of fire, Salamander. He was able to slay Salamander, but as a result, lost his power and became part of the sword that was bound to his remains. The sword is utterly immovable, but the evil force from the monster erasers can awaken the power within the sword that lay dormant. You shouldn't be hasty though, because the sword is already part of the ashes. When the sword reawakens, it'll be surrounded by the flames of Salamander, and no one will be able to touch it. Now I have no idea why the name changed from Salamander to Salamander. But Salamander sounds cooler than a generic just Salamander name. But anyway, the spirit tells you that you will need Undyne's Cloth, the one thing that can neutralize Salamander's massive force. The spirit has waited a pretty long time, but has never met anybody who obtained both the Monster Erasers and Undyne's Cloth. As you use the Monster Erasers to awaken the flaming katana, and you use Undyne's Cloth to wield the sword from the ashes, it proclaims you as the new rightful owner. The spirit laments that it's pretty tragic to think that the one sword he adored more than anything became the very thing that took away his freedom. But he does thank you for freeing him finally. Now if instead of doing that rad quest, if you're carrying around the erasers and some bluish mineral that you found, and you find yourself speaking to Han the Broker in Megatia, he's pretty interested in the strange mineral that you found recently. He's been looking for it for a long time and he requests a trade promising to reward you handsomely. Now he seems sus as hell, but all the rumors that you've heard of Han before say that he's pretty fair when it comes to business. When you give him all the materials that he wants, he mumbles something about overpowering some dude in blue tights that wears underwear on the outside, and then he gives you the Ring of Alchemist in return. I'm sure you know what that reference is already. So that's about it for all the Monster Eraser lore. I think the Flaming Katana lore is actually super dope. Like it's really actually super cool. Before I looked into this, I had no idea that the glowing whip was made by aliens either. I guess I never really thought about it though, but that was pretty cool to find out too. So while the monster racers, the hectagon necklace, undyne's cloth, and bluish mineral were all gachapon items, they were released in other gachapon-esque loot box BS things like the gold and silver chests, which were kind of counterproductive because they literally had the eraser quest rewards in their loot tables as well. Like the silver chests had the glowing whip and the blue seal chair and stuff like that. Now the normal town gachapon had the rewards as well, like the beginner frozen tuna and the flaming katana and glowing whip. The blue and pink seal chairs were never in a normal town gachapon, but you could get gold and gray ones. And I'm sure most people remember the white seal chair from CWKPQ. That's Crimson Wood Keep Party Quest. At some point though, it's way too hard to track down dates for mob drops, but Empress Cygnus dropped the erasers and the other items. Now I don't really like the idea of quests being semi-gated by gachapon, which was NX related. But I do think a boss dropping the items was a good alternative for a while. But I mean, I guess you could always just buy them from other players, so it wasn't really ever a huge deal. But anyway, yeah. Just something small. I thought it was pretty cool, and I just really wanted to put the Flaming Katana story out there because I enjoyed it so much. So I know I make videos pretty infrequently, so if you want to subscribe and click the little bell icon, you can get a notification when I actually do get around to making another video. But anyway, if there's anything important that I'm missing, let me know.